Human mobility has been central in the global economic, societal and environmental landscape of the past and it will become even more fundamental in the future. Historically understanding how human mobility evolved from the use of horses to the current state of fuel-based vehicles will help to analyze the future challenges in the very topical transition to electricity-powered mobility. Let us go back in time to a period when fossil fuel depletion and global warming were issues far beyond anyone's imagination. The horse, one of the most remarkable prime movers on the planet, pretty much ruled 19th century urban life and rural culture in both Europe and North America. Nevertheless, together with the need for a better way of moving and the technological evolution of combustion engines, gasoline-powered first cars started entering the market along with the first electric vehicles. It was 1832 when the first crude electric vehicle was developed by Robert Anderson. Then, in the 1870s, William Morrison from Des Moines, Iowa, created his first successful electric vehicle that first debuted in the US in 1986. It is in this thrilling time of innovations and exponential growth that EVs gained popularity. It is only after the First World War that better roads started to be built and many oil reservoirs were discovered. These factors, combined with cultural, ideological and emotional reasons, contributed to the decline of EVs for the benefit of gasoline cars. Tesla Incorporated, founded in 2003, was not the first company with the goal of developing an electric vehicle accessible to the masses. <clears throat> but through the last years, it has managed to establish its brand, popularize electric cars, and in 2019, its Model 3 was the most sold electric vehicle. How did it get there? Already in the early years of the company, the strategy was clear. Start with a premium sports car aimed at early adopters and then move into a more mainstream vehicle. Released in 2008, the Tesla Roadster was the first all-electric car to use lithium-ion battery cells and was able to travel more than 320 kilometers per charge. It sold for about 100,000 US dollars. The company was off to a slow start. By early 2010, Tesla had only sold 1,000 cars. In May of that year, Tesla launched its initial public offering on Nasdaq and raised $226 million for the company. In the following years, the stock price continued to experience huge variations due to uncertainties in the supply chain, the production and the fact that many investors doubted the ability of Tesla to deliver on its promises. But despite not turning a profit during most quarters, Tesla kept its focus on reinvesting in the business in order to make increasingly affordable electric cars. Fast forward to 2017, the Model 3 improved these performances for only $35,000. It is the only EV that combines range, affordability and performance. It is sold at more than 500,000 copies, which made it the best-selling EV in 2018. Now, what's next? Tesla proudly presented a new Roadster in 2020, which performs 0 to 97 km per hour in 1.9 seconds, what makes it banned on roads. It will also be able to perform 1,000 kilometers with its 200 kilowatt hours battery. In addition, the Cybertruck, which will be sold for $39,900, attracts the anger of designers and of people since it does not outperform the Model 3. After a spe spectacular fail, one may wonder what future the company wants to achieve. Let's move on to the last phase in this method, stabilization, which inherently requires to assess future developments. First of all, let's evaluate the prospects of electric mobility. There is the old debate about whether ranges suffice not only for everyday car rides, but also when going on vacation and covering larger distances. Studies conducted by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology suggest that an electric vehicle's range could cover 87% of all trips not including likely future improvements in range. The competitiveness of electric vehicles and Tesla accordingly will further increase with the extension of supercharger infrastructure that would allow even longer trips, increasing possible coverage of feasible electric mobility deployment. The next factor of uncertainty is financial viability. As a condition for consistent deployment, electric mobility should be economically self-sufficient without relying on governmental subsidies. This increase in profitability could be caused by saving production costs, 
by upscaling and more efficient distribution networks, similar to the current traditional cars. Moreover, increased electric mobility is likely to contribute to mitigating climate change repercussions like changes in weather patterns due to higher temperatures and subsequent rising sea levels, both caused by increased CO2 emissions. This can be achieved by offering opportunities to time independently store excess electricity from intermittent renewable sources like solar and wind. In return, this could result in a positive feedback loop where the electricity grid contributing to the large-scale electrification of entire energy systems. 